Hello, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and welcome back, my friends. Today for you, I have a tutorial. Recently, I filmed a music video for a band and so I thought I would show you all my tips and tricks throughout the process and hopefully you'll find it helpful and interesting. Be sure to check the links below. That's the best way to support the channel. Now, let's do it. The golden rule when filming a music video is to make sure you get lots of footage and lots of different angles of the band playing all the way through the song. So to kick off, I'll show you the shots that I captured. The very shot I insisted on getting was a safety shot. What I mean by that is an angle that I can cut to if there are any problems with any other shots. And I'm bloody glad I did because I did need it in the end. So I threw the camera onto a slider that I had mounted onto a tripod and I got a fairly wide shot of the whole band playing the song all the way through whilst I moved the slider back and forth. For this shot I used a Canon 16-35 f4 which is a beautifully made lens that gives you tons of detail. I've done reviews on this channel of all the lenses I used for this music video so if you want to know more about my experience with them they're linked below. I then put the camera on a Xeon Crane gimbal and changed my lens to a Canon 35mm f2 IS, which I chose because it gives a really nice aesthetic, it's really light and well suited to gimbal work. In this shot I stopped the lens down a bit so I'd have a bit more depth of field and then I just walked around the band cherry picking certain instruments to feature during the song. And then immediately after I wanted to get a shot all the way through the song of the singer with the camera on the gimbal with the same lens except this time I opened up the aperture a bit to separate the background from the subject. At the same time I had an assistant wave a strip light back and forth over the singer which gives a really cool effect of shadows shifting back and forth across his face. Next I put the camera back on the slider and stuck with the 35mm lens to get a shot all the way through of the drummer doing his thing. I'd say this shot isn't essential for every band music video, but it definitely was with this band because the drummer is just so active within the song. I'm sure you'll see if you click through to see the music video, he is an awesome drummer and really felt necessary to show off his skills in the video, so I wanted to show lots of shots of him. I then switched lenses to a Sigma 50mm f1.4 art and moved my slider setup and got a shot of the guitarist who is similarly highly skilled with lots of incredibly complex solos and cool riffs so obviously I needed plenty of footage of him doing his thing as well. Next I spent quite a while getting some handheld and slider shots of certain details that I wanted to feature like the drummer's cymbals in the most melodic section of the song, the bassist slash keyboard player uh, playing his melody in, in that same section and a couple of close-up alternative angles of some of the instruments. And lastly, I wanted to shoot just the singer in a completely different environment. So I put the camera back on the gimbal, changed back to the 35mm lens and left the studio and found a country lane which was perfect for a walk and follow shot with the singer miming to the camera. And those are the shots I got. To be honest, I would have preferred one or two more locations to shoot in but you know, this is a band that let the instruments do the talking and the last thing they wanted to do was for it to end up looking like a Backstreet Boys turned rock band video. Lighting wise, I used a really simple setup for this video because it was a relatively small room that had quite nice light in there already. So I opted for a two light setup. I've got one behind the camera, which is set to fairly low power and quite diffused. The other you can see behind the drums because I wanted to have a very hard light behind them. I'm a big fan of backlighting in general and that's why I really wanted to do it on this video because it's quite dramatic. And that's basically it for lighting. Very simple, quick and easy setup. I edited the video in Final Cut and I used the multicam feature which I won't go through now because I've done a whole separate video about it which I'll link below if you're interested. But I know you want to see how I colour graded the footage so here goes. This video was actually relatively easy to grade in the end just because the lighting was pretty good and I got the exposure basically exactly where I wanted it to be. So here we are in the multicam view and as I mentioned if you haven't used multicam definitely go back and watch my multicam video as this will really help. So the first thing I'm going to add is an instance of colour wheels and I'm just going to drop the exposure a little bit because I know that I have it overexposed just a little bit 
and that's just to keep the noise down in my footage. Next, I'm gonna add my lookup table as that will do the bulk of the work for me. Lately, I've been using Phantom LUT and in the pack, you get the regular five lookup tables and you also get monitor LUTs, and I kind of like both. I know you're not really meant to use monitor ones for regular footage, but in this case, I preferred them. Next, I added a vignette because, well, this is a rock band and they wanted it to look, you know, fairly contrasty and, and quite moody, and I think a vignette really helps with that kind of look. Before I edit the parameters of the vignette, I'm just gonna tweak the contrast a bit and give it a tiny bit more saturation. And with the vignette, I like to turn off any kind of blur because it's just unnatural. And then I just like to keep the darken effects around the edges uh, relatively subtle. I don't want a heavy vignette. Next, I'm gonna add an instance of Letterbox so that I can add my 2.35 to one aspect ratio, which between the band and I we discussed would be the look that we wanted to go for. Of course, whenever you do this, you're gonna to want to adjust the offset of your footage to check that everything is in frame, you're not cutting anyone's heads off, that kind of thing. The last thing I did is I just went back to my color wheels and I just pushed the shadows a little bit more into that sort of tealy blue kind of color and the mid-tones I gave a tiny bit more warmth. And that's basically it. Notice I've added no sharpening because I'm using sharp lenses and I'm filming in 4K. I didn't really feel like there was any need. And that's basically the approach I took with all of the shots. And I, obviously there was some color matching that I had to do between shots, but that wasn't difficult. And yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And that's it for now. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. I've got a large back catalog of videos about video on this channel of which YouTube recommends this one for you. And my latest upload will be just underneath. If you're not already subscribed, then definitely do it. Hit the blob that's just over my shoulder. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.